Henry III, the 19th of September 1551 to the 2nd of August 1589, born Alexander Eduard de France, Polish Henryk Wolesi, Lithuanian Henryk Zwolua, was king of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth from 1573 to 1575 and king of France from 1574 until his death. Henry was the 13th king from the House of Valois, the 6th from the Valois-Orléans branch, the 5th from the Valois-Orléans-Angoulême branch, and the last male of his dynasty. As the fourth son of King Henry II of France, he was not expected to inherit the French throne and thus was a good candidate for the vacant throne of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, where he was elected King, Grand Duke in 1573. During his brief rule, he signed the Henrician Articles into law, recognizing the Polish nobility's right to freely elect their monarch. Aged 22, Henry abandoned Poland-Lithuania upon inheriting the French throne when his brother, Charles IX, died without issue. France was at the time plagued by the wars of religion, and Henry's authority was undermined by violent political parties funded by foreign powers, the Catholic League supported by Spain and the Pope, the Protestant Huguenots supported by England and the Dutch and the Malcontents, led by Henry's own brother, the Duke of Alencon, which was a party of Catholic and Protestant aristocrats who jointly opposed the absolutist ambitions of the king. Henry III was himself a politique, arguing that a strong and religiously tolerant monarchy would save France from collapse. After the death of Henry's younger brother Francis, Duke of Anjou, and when it became apparent that Henry would not produce an heir, the wars of religion developed into a succession crisis, the War of the Three Henrys. Henry III's legitimate heir was his distant cousin Henry, King of Navarre, a Protestant. The Catholic League, led by Henry I, Duke of Guise, sought to exclude Protestants from the succession and championed the Catholic Charles, Cardinal of Bourbon, as Henry III's heir. In 1589, Jacques Clement, a Catholic fanatic, murdered Henry III. He was succeeded by the King of Navarre who, as Henry IV, assumed the throne of France after converting to Catholicism, as the first French king of the House of Bourbon. Early life Childhood Henry was born at the Royal Château de Fontainebleau, the fourth son of King Henry II and Catherine de Medici and grandson of Francis I of France and Claude of France. His older brothers were Francis II of France, Charles IX of France, and Louis of Valois. He was made Duke of Angoulême and Duke of Orléans in 1560, then Duke of Anjou in 1566. He was his mother's favorite, she called him Cher's you, precious eyes, and lavished fondness and affection upon him for most of his life. His elder brother, Charles, grew to detest him, partially because he resented his better health. The royal children were raised under the supervision of the governor and governess of the royal children, Claude Durfay and Françoise Dumières, under the orders of Diane de Poitiers. Topic. Youth In his youth, Henry was considered the best of the sons of Catherine de' Medici and Henry II. Unlike his father and elder brothers, he had little interest in the traditional Valois pastimes of hunting and physical exercise. Although he was both fond of fencing and skilled in it, he preferred to indulge his tastes for the arts and reading. These predilections were attributed to his Italian mother. At one point in his youth he showed a tendency towards Protestantism as a means of rebelling. At the age of nine, calling himself a little Huguenot, he refused to attend Mass, sang Protestant psalms to his sister Margaret exhorting her all the while to change her religion and cast her book of hours into the fire, and even bit the nose off a statue of St. Paul. His mother firmly cautioned her children against such behavior, and he would never again show any Protestant tendencies. Instead, he became nominally Roman Catholic. Topic: <inaudible> Sexuality. Reports that Henry engaged in same-sex relations with his court favorites, known as the Mignons, date back to his own time. Certainly, he enjoyed intense relationships with them. The scholar Lewis Crompton maintains that all of the contemporary rumors were true. Some modern historians dispute this. 
Jean-François Solnan, Nicolas Larue, and Jacqueline Boucher have noted that Henry had many famous mistresses, that he was well known for his taste in beautiful women, and that no male sex partners have been identified. They have concluded that the idea he was homosexual was promoted by his political opponents both Protestant and Catholic who used his dislike of war and hunting to depict him as effeminate and undermine his reputation with the French people. Certainly his religious enemies plumbed the depths of personal abuse in attributing vices to him, topping the mixture with accusations of what they regarded as the ultimate devilish vice, homosexuality and the portrait of a self-indulgent sodomite, incapable of fathering an heir to the throne, proved useful in efforts by the Catholic League to secure the succession for Cardinal Charles de Bourbon after 1585. Gary Ferguson found their interpretations unconvincing. It is difficult to reconcile the king whose use of favorites is so logically strategic with the man who goes to pieces when one of them dies. Catherine Crawford, by contrast, emphasizes the problems Henry's reputation encountered because of his failure to produce an heir and the presence of his powerful mother at court, combined with his enemies' insistence on conflating patronage with favoritism and luxury with decadence. <laughs> Elizabeth In 1570, discussions commenced arranging for Henry to court Queen Elizabeth I of England. Elizabeth, almost 37, was expected by many parties in her country to marry and produce an heir. However, nothing came of these discussions. In initiating them, Elizabeth is viewed by historians as having intended only to arouse the concern of Spain, rather than contemplate marriage seriously. The chance of marriage was further blighted by differing religious views Henry was Catholic, Elizabeth Protestant and his opinion of Elizabeth. Henry tactlessly referred to Elizabeth as a putain publique public whore and made stinging remarks about their difference in age. Upon hearing inaccurately that she limped because of a varicose vein, he called her an old creature with a sore leg. <laughs> Wars of religion Prior to ascending the French throne in 1574, Henry served as a leader of the royal army in the French Wars of Religion, taking part in the victories over Huguenots at the Battle of Jarnac March 1569 and at the Battle of Moncontour October 1569. While still Duke of Anjou, he helped plot the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre of 1572. Though Henry did not participate directly, historian Thierry Winegfelin sees him as the royal most responsible for the massacre, which involved the targeted killing of many key Huguenot leaders. Henry III's reign as King of France, like those of his elder brothers Francis and Charles, would see France in constant turmoil over religion. Henry continued to take an active role in the wars of religion, and in 1572–1573 led the Siege of La Rochelle, a massive military assault on the Huguenot-held city. At the end of May 1573, Henry learned that the Polish Zalakta had elected him King of Poland a country with a large Protestant minority at the time and political considerations forced him to negotiate an end to the assault. Negotiators reached an agreement on 24 June 1573, and Catholic troops ended the siege on 6 July 1573. <laughs> King of Poland and Grand Duke of Lithuania 1573 Following the death of the Polish ruler Sigismund II Augustus on 7 July 1572, Jean de Monluc was sent as the French envoy to Poland to negotiate the election of Henry to Polish throne in exchange for military support against Russia, diplomatic assistance in dealing with the Ottoman Empire, and financial subsidies. On 16 May 1573, Polish nobles chose Henry as the first elected monarch of the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. The Lithuanian nobles boycotted this election, however, and it was left to the Lithuanian Ducal Council to confirm his election. The Commonwealth elected Henry, rather than Habsburg candidates, partly in order to be more agreeable to the Ottoman Empire a traditional ally of France through the Franco-Ottoman alliance and strengthen a Polish-Ottoman alliance that was in effect. A Polish delegation went to La Rochelle to meet with Henry, who was leading the siege of La Rochelle. Henry left the siege following their visit. In Paris, on 10 September, the Polish delegation asked Henry to take an oath, at Notre Dame Cathedral, to "...respect traditional Polish liberties and the law on religious freedom that had been passed during the interregnum." 
As a condition of his election, he was compelled to sign the Pacta Conventa and the Henrician Articles, pledging religious tolerance in the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Henry chafed at the restrictions on monarchic power under the Polish-Lithuanian political system of golden liberty. The Polish-Lithuanian parliament had been urged by Anna Jagiellon, the sister of the recently deceased king Sigismund II Augustus, to elect him based on the understanding that Henry would wed Anna afterward. At a ceremony before the Parliament of Paris on 13 September, the Polish delegation handed over the certificate of election to the throne of Poland-Lithuania. Henry also gave up any claims to succession and he recognized the principle of free election under the Henrician Articles and the Pacta Conventa. It was not until January 1574 that Henry was to reach the borders of Poland. On 21 February, Henry's coronation was held in Krakow. In mid-June 1574, upon learning of the death of his brother Charles IX, Henry left Poland and headed back to France. Henry's absence provoked a constitutional crisis that the Parliament attempted to resolve by notifying Henry that his throne would be lost if he did not return from France by 12 May 1575. His failure to return caused Parliament to declare his throne vacant. The short reign of Henry at Wawel Castle in Poland was marked by a clash of cultures between the Polish and the French. The young king and his followers were astonished by several Polish practices and disappointed by the rural poverty and harsh climate of the country. The Polish, on the other hand, wondered if all Frenchmen were as concerned with their appearance as their new king appeared to be. In many aspects, Polish culture had a positive influence on France. At Wawel, the French were introduced to new technologies of septic facilities, in which litter excrement was taken outside the castle walls. On returning to France, Henry wanted to order the construction of such facilities at the Louvre and other palaces. Other inventions introduced to the French by the Polish included a bath with regulated hot and cold water, as well as dining forks. In 1578, Henry created the Order of the Holy Spirit to commemorate his becoming first King of Poland and later King of France on the Feast of Pentecost and gave it precedence over the earlier Order of St. Michael, which had lost much of its original prestige by being awarded too frequently and too readily. The Order would retain its prestige as the premier chivalric Order of France until the end of the French monarchy. Topic: French reign 1575 to 1589. Henry was crowned king of France on the 13th of February 1575 at Reims Cathedral. Although he was expected to produce an heir after he married Louise of Lorraine on the 14th of February 1575, no issue resulted from their union. In 1576, Henry signed the Edict of Beaulieu, which granted many concessions to the Huguenots. His action resulted in the Catholic activist Henry I, Duke of Guise, forming the Catholic League. After much posturing and negotiations, Henry was forced to rescind most of the concessions that had been made to the Protestants in the Edict. In 1584, the king's youngest brother and heir presumptive, Francis, Duke of Anjou, died. Under Salic law, the next heir to the throne was Protestant Henry of Navarre, a descendant of Louis IX, St. Louis. Under pressure from the Duke of Guise, Henry III issued an edict suppressing Protestantism and annulling Henry of Navarre's right to the throne. On 12 May 1588, when the Duke of Guise entered Paris, an apparently spontaneous day of the barricades erupted in favour of the Catholic champion. Henry III fled the city. Following the defeat of the Spanish Armada that summer, the King's fear of Spanish support for the Catholic League apparently waned. Accordingly, on 23 of December 1588, at the Château de Blois, he invited the Duke of Guise to the council chamber where his brother Louis II, Cardinal of Guise, already waited. The Duke was told that the King wished to see him in the private room adjoining the royal bedroom. There, royal guardsmen murdered the Duke, then the Cardinal. To make certain that no contender for the French throne was free to act against him, the King had the Duke's son imprisoned. The Duke of Guise had been very popular in France, and the citizenry turned against Henry for the murders. The Parliament instituted criminal charges against the king, and he was compelled to join forces with his heir, the Protestant Henry of Navarre, by setting up the Parliament of Tours. Overseas relations 
Under Henry, France named the first consul of France in Morocco in the person of Guillaume Berard. The request came from the Moroccan prince Abd al Malik, who had been saved by Berard, a doctor by profession, during an epidemic in Constantinople and wished to retain Berard in his service. Henry III encouraged the exploration and development of New World territories. In 1588, he granted Jacques Noel, the nephew of Jacques Cartier, privileges over fishing, fur trading, and mining in New France. Assassination and burial On 1 August 1589, Henry III lodged with his army at Saint Cloud, and was preparing to attack Paris, when a young fanatical Dominican friar, Jacques Clement, carrying false papers, was granted access to deliver important documents to the king. The monk gave the king a bundle of papers and stated that he had a secret message to deliver. The king signaled for his attendants to step back for privacy, and Clement whispered in his ear while plunging a knife into his abdomen. Clement was then killed on the spot by the guards. At first, the king's wound did not appear fatal, but he enjoined all the officers around him, in the event that he did not survive, to be loyal to Henry of Navarre as their new king. The following morning, on the day that he was to have launched his assault to retake Paris, Henry III died. Chaos swept the attacking army, most of it quickly melting away. The proposed attack on Paris was postponed. Inside the city, joy at the news of Henry III's death was near delirium. Some hailed the assassination as an act of God. Henry III was interred at the Saint Denis Basilica. Childless, he was the longest living of Henry II's sons to have become king and also the last of the Valois kings. Henry III of Navarre succeeded him as Henry IV, the first of the kings of the House of Bourbon. Arms Ancestors In popular culture Poetry Jan Kahanowski, Gallo Crocitanti, 1576. Pierre Mathieu, La Guisiade, 1589. Topic: Theater. George Chapman, The Tragedy of Bussy d'Ambois, 1607, and The Revenge of Bussy d'Ambois, 1613. John Dryden and Nathaniel Lee, The Duke of Guise, 1683. Alexander Dumas, Pers Henry III and His Court 1829. Christopher Marlowe, The Massacre at Paris 1593. <laughs> Novel Alexander Dumas, Pers Novels, La Reine Margot 1845, La Dame de Montsoreau 1846, and Les Courants Cinq 1847. Alexander Dumas Les Der Diane Stanley Wayman, A Gentleman of France 1893, involves the events of Henry's reconciliation with the Huguenots and struggle against the Catholic League, leading to his assassination. Last Days of Henry III, King of France on IMDb Robert Merle Paris Ma Bonne Ville 1980. Robert Merle Le Prince K. Voila 1982. Robert Merle La Violent Amour 1983 Jean Platy Queen Jezebel 1953 Michel Zevaco Les Pardalen 1900 Topic <laughs> Film The French short film The Assassination of the Duc de Guise 1908 shows the duke's assassination but not the cardinal's the co-director, Charles Labargie, plays the Duke. The American silent film Intolerance 1916 depicts Henry as effeminate but not explicitly homosexual. He is portrayed by the British-born American actor Maxfield Stanley. The French movies La Reine Margot 1954 and La Reine Margot 1994, both based on Alexandre Dumas, per his novel of the same title, are fictional depictions of the lives of Henry III's family, his sister Margot, and her Protestant husband Henry around the time of the St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre. 
In the 1994 film, Henry is played by the actor Pascal Gregory. In Dumas' novel, Henri was not portrayed as homosexual, whereas, in the 1954 film, he was shown as an effeminate, comical queen. In the 1994 film, he was portrayed as a more sinister character, bisexual and showing sexual interest in his sister. His brother dies by being accidentally poisoned by his mother, who had intended to kill Henry of Navarre instead. As the Duke of Anjou, the future Henry III plays a significant role in the French film The Princess of Montpensier, based on the novel of the same title by Madame de la Fayette. The film Elizabeth, released in 1998, depicts a fictional courtship between Elizabeth I of England and Henry III while he was still Duke of Anjou. In reality, the two never met and the Queen of England was actually courted nearly ten years later by his younger brother François, Duke of Anjou, when Elizabeth was 46. The film borrows some of the aspects of Henry III's life and features Anjou as a comical foolish transvestite. The role is portrayed by the French actor Vincent Castle. In the film Dangerous Beauty, he has an assignation with the main character, the Venetian courtesan Veronica Franco. Visiting a Venice eager for military aid, the French king chooses her from among the famous courtesans of that city because he notices her reluctance. Placing a blade at her neck, he tells Veronica that the rumors about him are true, that the king is a pervert, and the implication is made that Veronica pleases him enormously by first correctly guessing at and then indulging his fetish for BDSM domination. When the king emerges from Franco's house in the morning, the assembled Venetian nobility awaiting, he smiles broadly while carefully settling his presumably sore posterior on a pillow, and then declares that the French navy shall assist the Venetians against the Ottoman Empire in defense of their rule of Cyprus. He is played by the British actor Jake Weber. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Television. In an episode of Animaniacs entitled, The Three Muska Warners, an Elmer Fudd-like Henri III is protected by Yakko, Wacko and Dot. In this version, Henri is portrayed by Jeff Bennett as nervous and jumpy, and for no apparent reason speaks with an English accent. He is also featured in a few episodes in the first and third seasons of the CW show Rain. In the show's fourth season, Henry is played by Nick Slater. With his brother showing little interest in the job, Spain wants Henry to become France's king. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Opera. Chabrier's opera comique Le Roi Malgré Louis (1887) deals with the unhappy Polish episode, with Henri as the reluctant king of Poland. In Krakow, he conspires with Polish nobles to depose himself. His friend Nanges changes places with him, but in the end, the plot fails and the curtain falls on Henri being crowned. See also Chico History of Poland 1569 Les Mignons Louis de Ray Notes <laughs>